Hello, this is Mr. Wynn, and this video is about algebraic proofs. So a big part of geometry is writing a formal proof. Doing just the math or work by itself isn't enough. you got to provide the reason or justification. The good news is that these are quite obvious reasons, and they just use common sense. However, you do need to learn the names for each of the rules, properties, postures, definitions, theorems we will reference. So here's the list of all the ones from Algebra 1. Hopefully you've heard the addition property equality. All that says is if you have A equals B, you can add the same thing both sides. We can say, oh, A plus C equals B plus C. Subtraction property equality is what you do to one side, you do both sides, you subtract something from both sides. Multiplication property equality, or POE is the abbreviation, is you multiply both sides by the same number. Division POE is when you divide both things by the same number. Reflexive is if the set both sides match. Symmetric is when you switch the sides. So if A equals B, you can change it to B equals A, which we do use a lot. Transitive is if you have A equals B and B equals C, then you say A equals C. That's pretty much the law of syllogism. Substitution, you can replace or plug in something or simplify combined terms, that's substitution. Then obviously you have distribute, so if A parentheses B plus C, it's just A times B plus A times C. Alright, here's a two column proof, which is the main way we show a proof. It just shows the statements and reasons and justification organized in two columns. So let's try a problem. It says, given negative 5 parentheses x plus 4 equals 70, prove that x equals negative 18. So we make a t-chart, left side statements, right side's reason. If you want to abbreviate s and r, that's fine. So everything we write on the left side, we must have a reason on the right side. So first, I'm going to write the problem. Now, why was I allowed to write the problem? That's because it was given to me. The first reason of a two-column proof is always given, no matter what. From here, what would you do? Hopefully, you know you distribute negative 5. So it would be negative 5 times x plus negative 5 times 4 equals 70. So that's called the distributive property of equality or distributive property. And uh, that's just negative 5. You do not put the same parentheses, but I like showing what I actually did. From here, you would multiply negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Now that is called substitution because we're replacing negative 5 parentheses x with negative 5 and negative 5 parentheses 4 with negative 20. All right, it's just simplifying. From here, you'd add 20 both sides. I'm going to show it like this. That's addition property of equality. Then I'm going to do substitution. Again, I'm going to combine negative 20 plus 20 is 0. So this is negative 5x on the left side. 70 plus 20 is 90. So I did substitution. Then here, I divide both sides by negative 5. So that's called the division property of equality. Divide both sides by negative 5. Then I'm going to reduce, meaning do substitution. Negative 5x over negative 5 is the same thing as x. Substitute. 90 divided by negative 5 is the same thing. It's substituted with the value of negative 18. That's what they wanted, so we are done. So it's the same math you do, but with all the reason and justification of the words. Now actually, I will let you skip this substitution step all the time unless it's very necessary. So let's do another problem without writing substitutions as much. Because I go straight from distribute into this. So here's what I mean. Given 36 equals negative 4, parentheses x plus 1, minus 8, prove x equals negative 12. So again, we have our t-chart, statements on the left, reasons or justification on the right. And again, you abbreviate s here and r here or j. So first, I wrote the problem because it was given to me. Next, I would distribute. So after I distribute, negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. So that's the true property. From here, you combine like terms. So here, you have to write substitution because we substituted negative 12 in for negative 4 minus 8. We combine those two. Then I would add 12 both sides. To get this, I divide this by negative 4 to get negative 12 equals x. So that's division of equality. Now notice these steps pretty much talk about the step before, like what you do from here to here. Now we're not done. They said proof x equals negative 12, not negative 12 equals x. So there's one more step. I can flip it because of the symmetric property of equality. So here's a full proof. All right, next problem. The paragraph proof is another way we show a proof. It shows the statements and reasons of justifications in a sentence by sentence format. So we're going to do the exact same problem as before, but put in paragraph form. And actually, I'm going to use the same answer from before just to so you can compare and contrast. It's pretty much the same thing. So again, given this problem, prove that this was what we had last time. So first, we'd say, well, if we have the problem, then we get this by distributive property. So you don't write given here. Then from there, if you're at this piece, what do you do next? You combine to get that by substitution. 
then you get that green problem. Oops. What would you do next? You would add 12 by addition property inequality. Then you've got this red line. What would you do next? You get rid of the negative 4 by division. So by division property inequality. And then from that orange problem, you would flip it by the symmetric property of equality. You don't have to put the parentheses the number. I just do it just to make it more obvious. Alright, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you're asking questions. Thanks. See you soon. Bye.